Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome back to Lone Star. This is uh, Lone Star episode number 13, and, well, there's nothing really unlucky about this episode at all. Uh, we're going to get right to work here today. Um, it is a brand new game day. It is early summer. It is um, the second game day of early summer, actually. And if we'll just bring up our map here, we'll just check status of everything. Um, all of our fields that we own are planted. All of our fields are mostly uh, fertilized, that, or at least fertilized for what we can do for this particular game day. Uh, we can hit some of our other fields, uh, like two, three, uh, one, and uh, we might get actually fertilized field number six today. Um, we'll check that and see. Uh, if we can do that, uh, probably off camera. Uh, we do have um, some of our hard workers working hard here on the farm. We've got uh, we've got Red out mowing uh, again this morning because we do need to try to get some. Ooh, uh, 18 hours, cool. I think we'll have some more wool, uh, obviously, to um, uh, to get uh, sold uh, momentarily. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is mostly going to be animal work. We just need to uh, we need to tend to the animals. And actually, uh, what am I doing here? I need to spin around and go over and pick up. And sorry if I'm making anyone dizzy uh, from that spinning motion there. My apologies. But we are going to come over here and pick up our water tanker and go ahead and uh, give all of our animals um, some water. Top them up. I hope everyone is having a really wonderful day. Uh, it's a uh, been a fine day here, um, and actually, uh, believe it or not, um, let's see. We need to hook the PTO up, don't we? I think this has PTO. Maybe it does not. It looks like it does, but maybe it doesn't have. A PTO. Maybe it's kind of a magical uh, thing there and just operates all by itself. But it is full, so we will go ahead and proceed. Um, oddly enough, I'm recording this episode on May the 17th. It is, I think it's Wednesday, if, uh, if my memory is correct there. And you guys are going to watch this episode on Thursday the 25th. So I'm almost a full week ahead, I think on this Memorial Day is almost here Memorial Day weekend but if you can believe it it is the 17th of May here in Denver Colorado and we have snow in the forecast can you uh, uh, can you believe that I do have to attach the PTO I thought I did I'm just not really sure why it is not wanting to attach here it is the Z key there we go gotta climb up on the hitch there to get it to connect in I guess I got to put my big boot on it and uh, get it to do that so we're gonna go ahead and top up our animals here and of course that's all that they needed was just a little smidge of water there but anyway if you can believe it is the 17th of May and I know I've said the date about 1600 times in the last uh, three minutes but it is going to snow we have snow in the forecast if you can believe that and it is just crazy um, the last couple of days, actually, we have had, um, you know, in the 70s, uh, mid-70s, I actually um, had, it's been a very nice, I get up every morning at about a quarter to five, about 4.45 in the morning, um, sort of like a farmer would do, right? Um, and look at that, we've got a sheep uh, is taking a bath there in the water trough. Um, that's awfully cute. Um, so anyway, um, I get up about a quarter to five every morning and I go and I walk five miles. Do that in the course of uh, just over, just a little over an hour. I've got a pretty fast pace, long legs, and uh, I get with it and, and get my walk in. And so um, it takes me about an hour, 15 minutes, I guess. Come back home, uh, take a shower, and basically... Um, uh, apply my uh, first coat or my first uh, application of Java and of course I'm talking about coffee I, I cannot I just cannot function without getting my coffee in my system first and so um, take a shower have a cup of coffee and everything and then I, I head to work in the last couple of actually about the last week and a half I've been walking to work I live 
um, only about a half mile from work and so I have been taking advantage of the of the nice mild days and I have been walking to work and actually been quite enjoying it uh, I've been enjoying the walks and um, but yeah so we've had mid 70s or so for the daytime highs come on girls let's go let's go come on come on there you go let me just oh, don't turn of course you're gonna turn all right so anyway I've uh, been walking to work and the last couple of days the weather has just been incredibly incredibly uh, mild and just nice I mean just a nice spring day well um, today the temperature was just a little bit cooler and um, not a big deal um, but um, so tonight temperatures are going to start to drop we've got a bit of a cold front uh, coming in as we've got one of our girls walking through our water tanker there uh, got a cold front coming through got some moisture in the air got a got a system that's coming in that's going to bring um, start with rain the rain is going to turn into kind of a rain snow mix sometime tomorrow morning but then I believe it's going to shift back to rain and then um, Thursday, so the 18th into the 19th, so Thursday night into Friday, um, the temperature is going to continue to drop even further. Uh, I don't think we're going to get down below freezing, but it's going to be in the upper 30s, and of course that is just fine for uh, making snow. And yeah, we're going to have uh, we're going to have some snow if you can believe that. And it's just uh, it's just a really crazy crazy thing I can't remember now of course we've had snow in May uh, many times but I cannot remember and even talking to some of my uh, some of my colleagues at work that are like say uh, for example we might call them Colorado natives so they've they've been around they grew up here they can't remember a snow event this late in the year uh, either so interesting uh, interesting stuff for sure and uh, we'll just we'll just deal with it we'll just roll with the punches and do whatever it is that we need to do and everything will be fine so um, but yeah crazy crazy stuff so I'll be out shaking trees and um, you know all of our trees of course have leaves and everything on them and and I might have been keeping you guys sort of abreast of the situation over the last several weeks you know we've had I've probably talked about uh, some bullets that we've managed to dodge with regards to uh, some systems that have come through the area that really all they ever brought was um, was rain I mean we, we got lucky several times and never had an issue with a lot of snow I think the last snow event that we had was um, just probably uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a, maybe an inch or two and let me fix that uh, 1000 Vario right quick all right, so still having some course play woes and and such. I need to uh, redo that mowing course for it to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more easier uh, for the driver to handle that. But um, here on here on uh, Lone Star, I'm still running both the um, uh, the more realistic mod as well as running the gearbox mod. And I'm still confused at why, if you turn the gearbox mod off on a tractor, and for example, for course play to really work for me, I'm having to turn the manual gearbox mod off. And the way I'm doing that is in the F1 menu, it says right shift and um, um, semicolon there, turn the gear manual gearbox on and off. Of course, you've got to stop the tractor engine before you can make that change. But I'm I'm doing that, and then if I switch tractors, if I jump back into the tractor that was doing the mowing, the um, it's it's back on, and I don't I don't understand why that is the case. I would like for it to remain off, at least during the game session that I'm playing. If there is a reason for it to come back on, then uh, then that is that is of course fine. Um, if you restart the game, but for the most part, if the game is uh, is still on, I would like for that to stay off because I think it works better. I think course play works better with that, and there was supposed to have been an update for um, for course play that was supposed to um, 
tackle the more realistic mod a little bit. I haven't really noticed a difference with it, but I don't have near the problems on Lone Star that um, I have with Lawfold. So for right now, the more realistic and the gearbox mod can stay on. To be quite honest, I'm just driving the equipment with the gearbox mod in automatic. So um, it probably doesn't even benefit me having the gearbox mod installed and activated simply because if I am going to drive the equipment around in automatic mode, uh, it probably sort of defeats the purpose of having that. But I've been wanting to sort of play with it, test it, see how it works. That way I can maybe help answer, answer some questions and such. I did do a little bit of reading about it um, this um, uh, today uh, during, uh, during my lunch. And um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. I don't know if I will keep it active or not. It seems to be uh, it seems to be kind of problematic, and um, well, I, you know, I don't mind having some problems. I really don't. Um, but if I can sort of minimize that, then maybe we're all for the better, at least until some of the kinks get worked out. But you know, you never know. You don't know that something gets fixed unless you're actively using it and sort of rolling through the punches and everything. And and well, that's just what we're going to do. So. Uh, time to feed the little piggies here. Um, my head tracker does, uh, for those of you that use a head tracker, you may know that um, when you are in cab, the he head tracker is active. If you're out of cab in third person, the head tracker is not active. But if you, um, if you take a drink of water, especially if you've got your, your head tracker like I do, my, uh, my track IR, I've got the, the, the hat clip. Um, and um, if you're drinking a, some water or a cup of coffee or something like that, if that, um, if that mug or whatever gets in the way of the tracker, it will cause the tracker to kind of freak out just a little bit. Um, and that is just the way it, it, um, that is just the way it goes. Let's see if we can do a better job at that. Okay, just like that. Try to do a little bit more in first person. Not, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to dominate in first person. So I know that a lot of people enjoy my channel because I do tend to operate a lot in third person, and that's really where folks can kind of see what's going on. It's it's really hard for you guys that are riding along with me, uh, obviously watching the video to see all the sites and experience everything on the map um, with uh, with first person going on but too bad the animation doesn't work uh, with these big these big uh, pig food bags I'm really not sure why that is the case I know that they work on the smaller ones uh, let's kind of see where we are here uh, probably gonna need maybe one more so uh, here today we found out about the new community manager that has been named um, for Cattle and Crops. I um, believe he goes by the nickname of Memphis. I think his real name is Matthias or something like that. And um, it's very good. I'm, I'm very pleased that, that Cattle and Crops has decided to put someone kind of put a named individual, a, a sort of a named contact, if you will, uh, in charge of the community uh, communication stuff. So obviously uh, Memphis, that's what we'll call him, just that's a little easier to pronounce than Matthias, but Memphis will be um, managing sort of the communication aspects, I'm assuming both in English and in German. I know that uh, he replied to the forum post where he was introduced and he uh, was able to communicate in English so that is good I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased that you know cattle and crops um, has not you know sort of uh, excluded us excluded us English only speakers and like I said I mean I, I suppose in a, in a sense I'm I'm sort of lucky because my wife does speak a little bit of German and she does from time to time from time to time 
sorry about that. She does from time to time help me translate things, but I can't constantly go and bug her uh, to help me with translations and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that just would not be, uh, that would not be uh, fair. And, um, but no, it's, it's very good that, you know, Catalan Crops is not um, just completely dominating everything in German. But this guy, from what I understand, is going to be responsible for the communications and everything. And so hopefully, you know, hopefully he has a good grasp of not only um, what the, what the game and everything is going to be. He's got a good grasp of the timelines with regards to all the early access stuff, all the, I'm assuming, again, I, I talk about this from time to time, that I'm, I'm assuming that we're going to see um, updates and stuff come out for the early access. Obviously, when we first get our hands on it, it's going to be maybe somewhat limited um, in what it will do and, and all that kind of stuff. But in time, it will... Um, it will basically evolve into um, into more more access, more function, more you know whatever, and so uh, that's that's going to be cool. Uh, and I'm I'm very very pleased that they've put somebody in charge of that because that's how you know that's how um, that's sort of how all companies sort of work with regards to uh, communication stuff is that. Um, they all will have somebody that is sort of responsible for communicating and that's what that individual will do and um, that way it frees up other people that may not be that I mean not everyone is a communicator uh, let's face it not everyone um, has the ability to write something that is going to be um, that is going to be able to you know, sort of be understood and comprehended and all that kind of stuff by um, by the masses of, of people. And so uh, uh, it's a good thing that they've that they've put someone in charge of that. So I'm uh, looking forward to more information. And of course, we're getting closer and closer to June. You know, it's creeping on by. By the time again, you guys see this, we're going to be almost to Memorial Day weekend and. And uh, I think I was talking about this, um, the last episode, maybe the last episode of Lone Star, actually, about how that, you know, Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S. of A., it's sort of the uh, sort of the unofficial, um, sort of the unofficial start of the summer, the unofficial beginning of the summer. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's one of my favorite holidays. I've got really fond memories of, you know, growing up as a kid. I think I, I mentioned in an episode that you know my uncle and I would often leave on our trips on our on our excursions on after you know on or after Memorial Day weekend I had some I had an aunt and uncle that lived in the Dallas Fort Worth area and oftentimes my parents myself my uncle uh, my grandmother and my grandfather would often uh, meet at their house in the Dallas Fort Worth area on Memorial Day weekend and have a nice big barbecue and uh, do all sorts of kind of things there and a couple of years I do remember that my uncle and I would leave on our trips um, after you know after that weekend after that weekend of events and uh, and of course the 4th of July is also a uh, wonderful holiday as well and of course then Labor Day weekend uh, falls in September, uh, the first weekend or so of September, and that is sort of the official end of summer because by then, you know, schools are back in session or very soon to be back in session, and, um, you know, it's just, you know, family vacations and stuff like that are over, and everybody's sort of focused on getting back to, uh, getting back to school, getting back to to work and all that kind of stuff so very cool stuff all right I think let me just check the levels of of hay I think that will be fine we need to mix up some mixed rations now and uh, I love mixing up mixed rations with these new um, silage uh, silo fermentation uh, tanks here makes it very easy to do that and what we'll do is we'll just park our telehandler up here for now we'll jump out 
and spin around and go over and get back in our case and head down and get in our pick up our mixing wagon down there so we're going to mix up some some uh, mixed rations here some total mixed rations or power food as it's as it's now called i think i prefer the total mix rations um, naming piece of it now i mix up my total mix rations um, let's see since we are mowing again i think what we'll do is um, is we'll mix this up with we'll mix this up with eight uh, with eight hay four straw and then um, the rest will be uh, will be silage of course you could do four straw four hay and the rest top the rest of it up with silage if you wanted to um, that's probably the the ratio that we will use once our uh, corn crop that's right across the way here right over there field number one once that is ready to chop uh, for chaff then obviously we will have a whole bunch of silage so I think that I think that kind of right now we will go ahead and go with the mixture that I just talked about with the uh, eight bells of hay, four bells of straw, and then the rest of it with um, with silage. As I almost drive into the wrong wrong thing here, and we're coming up on our magic number of 30 minutes. So um, I will um, just finish this up, and we'll get our silage, and then we'll go and and feed our cows, and consider this job to be done. You know, from the aspect, I know that I, and I think it was episode 59 of Law Folds, I kind of, I kind of complained a little bit about the Gearbox mod and the more realistic mod, just simply because, um, you know, there are some, there are a few little quirks and everything that are, you know, I think maybe buggy, glitchy, something like that, and I think that in time, all those things will kind of get better. Uh, but I do say that I do appreciate the added level of realism that, for example, when you grab a hold of, of a, um, you know, four bales of, of hay or straw or whatever the, the case is, you know, the little, tel uh, the little um, uh, telehandler here, it doesn't just, you know, you gotta, you gotta give it a little time. It, the engine just doesn't wind all the way up and you just are moving lickety split, you know, it's a, it simulates as if you've got a bit of a of a load behind you. So, um, all right. So we'll turn the we'll turn the mixing wagon off because that helps give us a little bit more power to our tractor. And it's possible that this little uh, case tractor is a little bit underpowered to be pulling this heavy uh, mixing wagon, but it'll be all right, I think. So we'll go ahead and fill the rest of this, and we'll turn our uh, mixing wagon on just to stir all that in. We'll just kind of keep an eye there, and we should get our total mix rations here momentarily. There we go. And uh, so much easier than messing with bells. And of course, I mean, it just really depends on what what you want to do. Some sometimes I like to to play with um, with the standard style silage bunkers, uh, where you've got to you know empty your uh, empty your your grass or your your chaff and then uh, level it and compact it and cover it and all of that kind of stuff but then you know I will tell you that um, on Pine Cove when I played Pine Cove Farm and we had uh, we had the silos for basically everything you had the silos for 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 straw and for hay and we basically didn't bell anything on that map um, it was just uh, it kind of got me um, I guess it kind of got me spoiled a little bit to uh, to that, so we'll turn it back on, and then we'll hit I and start emptying this out. So anyway, and of course we had the uh, we had the the silage uh, silo there, and those are those are um, those are actual um, real life things that they they do have here in the U.S. Um, I think that is more of a of a predominant thing the silo uh, silage silo fermentation stations than the concrete um, horizontal uh, bunkers that uh, 
uh, you mainly would see in Europe uh, British style farming and such as that so cool stuff you know I like doing uh, a little bit of everything and kind of mixing it up from time to time so um, all that is fine and fun and um, come on I'll yield to you but you're gonna run right through me aren't you so it really doesn't matter I mean whether whether I run the cows over or whether they run me over it really doesn't matter because um, they tend to just sort of have a mind of their own and and again you know I sort of think it would be nice it would be kind of a neat uh, feature if you could sort of maybe walk up to the barn area and, and there would be maybe you know a, a keystroke or something that you could hit and basically it would simulate moving the cows out of the barn especially like for facilities like on Cobra Park Farm for example where you had to sort of muck out the manure and everything. I always felt a bit strange uh, taking taking the um, the tractor with the manure forks and everything, or the bucket, into the into the barn area where there were cows uh, coming in. Because there you've got manure forks that you know you could easily shish kebab a dairy cow or three or more and um, I just think that in a lot of the videos that I see from real life farming um, when they're doing that you know they have the cows and everything either out in the pasture or they've moved them into another portion of the building or whatever and they clean that out and then they they let the they let the cows into you know back into the general population or whatever so Anyway, so this episode has really just sort of been a little bit about uh, a little bit about everything and a little bit about nothing, and um, but you know it tells a story, and um, every story um, every story has to be sort of has to be told. Uh, every story is worthy of being told, and so this is all just part of the journey as we make it through. This particular series and of course this like I said is episode 13 so please come again for episode 14 which you'll be seeing on Monday uh, actually that is Memorial Day so on Memorial Day uh, proper uh, here in the US of A it will be a, um, a three-day weekend for me and I tell you what I am counting the hours and the days until that comes around because uh, I'm actually not on call this uh, Memorial Day weekend some holidays I do I am on call but not this weekend or not this holiday weekend so that's going to be real nice and then my wife and I are going to spend a week up in the mountains in July for our wedding anniversary it's our 10th year wedding anniversary so uh, that's looking forward to that but anyway thank you all so much for watching I do appreciate you tuning in and watching my episodes watching my uh, let's plays my how to's my mod reviews when I when I record one and I've got some new stuff coming to the channel so if you've been lurking around please hit that subscribe button I would appreciate it also hit the like button and don't forget you can interact with me over at PCSG and the three dudes gaming network you'll find links to both down below follow me on Twitter check out my Facebook page Instagram all that good stuff take care thank you all so much and I'll talk to you soon bye bye